So guys, this was the pathophysiology in which we discussed all the symptoms and causes of rectal ulcers, colon ulcers, ulcerative colitis, inflammatory bowel diseases, Crohn's, Crohn's disease. I hope that all these things are clear to you now. Yes, I know the topic was confusing. It was a lengthy also. So let's hope that you have understood it as per your need. The next thing we now have to do is discuss about what are the do's and don'ts. First of all, I would like to thank each and every viewer who has watched these videos still here. But let's keep on going and learn what are the dietary interventions, how to heal our body from the problem. Okay, so the do's and don'ts will be discussed very soon. The most important thing is how to manage your fiber. We will be discussing that also in the upcoming videos. Then for people suffering from severe ulcerative colitis, you have to understand the concept of food maps. Later on, I will be giving you some different types of diet suggestions which you have to adopt one by one and see if they are working best for your body. Everybody has a different body. So sometimes one treatment cannot be beneficial to the other person, but we will keep on trying. I'll give you so many different options to choose from and then we will proceed to make your health better. So now let's discuss about the treatment. So when we will be talking about how to heal, how to treat your body, how to heal your body uh, from the conditions like rectal ulcer and ulcerative colitis, first we are going to give a brief discussion, a brief description about what type of medications are being given as an option and then we will discuss about the therapeutic diet. So when it comes to medication, uh, rectal ulcers and ulcerative colitis both are uh, dealt with you know conservative management that is there we are going to mostly treat the symptoms and some amount of uh, drugs will be given for the actual problem so we are uh, trying to conserve the symptoms as possible the, uh, in the rectal in the case of rectal ulcers antibiotics because there is uh, septicemia that is infection in blood and some laxatives because chronic constipation is the major cause corticosteroids are sometimes being used to heal up the wounds faster and uh, down regulate the inflammation that has occurred due to ulcers. Uh, when we talk about uh, IBS, IBD or ulcerative colitis, we usually give them uh, medications which uh, actually control muscle spasms. Okay, so to help with the cramping, anti-constipation drugs, if the person is feeling constipated only then, uh, antidepressants to ease pain and some other antibiotics. Uh, Linaclotide, uh, lubiprostone, these are some of the medicine that are being used to treat IBS patient with constipation. Uh, lubiprostone is used to relieve stomach pain, bloating, straining and uh, softer bowel movements and some frequent bowel movements. We are not going to go too in deep with the, the medication. Okay, we will be focusing on dietary management of these problems. So when we talk about dietary management, if you have seen the previous videos on my channel regarding uh, gastric ulcers or uh, duodenal ulcers or esophageal ulcers, so then starting things, starting protocols are going to sound like uh, a, a broken record. It's, they are going to be very repetitive to you maybe, but still in the case of rectal ulcers, ulcerative colitis and any other lower GI ulcerative or inflammatory disease, all types of coffees, teas or milk teas are avoided, okay, along with chocolate, okay, as well as no spicy food at all. We are not going to eat any type of spices because these spices are going to definitely burn our ulcers, okay, and will also uh, cause us very much pain and aggravate our symptoms. We are going to follow an elimination diet pattern so what is an elimination diet pan, uh, pattern we are going to discuss about it very soon we are also going to avoid any deep fried food see in general oils and uh, healthy fats are not to be avoided in this condition but very deep fried foods can also aggravate the symptoms of inflammation so we are going to avoid it also we are going to avoid all types of tobacco or alcohol consumption in our diet So before going further, let's discuss what are the do's and don'ts of treating yourself from these lower GI ulcers and inflammatory diseases. Number one, balance fiber intake. Balance fiber intake means too high fiber or too low fiber. Both can cause problems 
and there are different types of fiber some fibers might not suit you some fiber might suit you so we'll have to give it a hit or try uh, hit and trial method but uh, we have to keep the fiber in a balanced state to high fiber is also going to cause you problems to low fiber is also going to cause you problems hydration is the key even if you are constipated or you are having chronic diarrhea in both cases hydration is very important so we will follow a low food map and avoid a high food map so in the next slide in the next few slides we will be discussing what are food maps okay uh, we are going to stay hydrated and not dehydrated okay that is understood we are going to manage our weight so that no no amount of excess uh, weight around our pelvis region or our abdomen region might put any sort of pressure on our uh, lower abdomen or pelvic floor muscles or might restrict any type of blood flow so managing our weight is very important if we are obese or overweight as well as if we are underweight we will also have to we also have to battle with malnourishment we have to increase our diet intake in a manner that our symptoms are being contained and controlled we will avoid any types of stress and no exertions during bowel movement or else we've already read about rectal prolapse okay we don't want anything like that to happen see if you have watched the presentation till now i know this has been one of the very complicated topics one of the very lengthy topics and even this is a very complicated topic for my students when i teach them uh, during their internship or training program so thanks for you know staying tuned with the presentation till now and uh, i hope that i'm clear uh, clarifying all the doubts we are going to from now on we are going to discuss these of the following categories okay what is food maps types of foods and food maps okay we will be covering these topics uh, later on we will also talk about uh, how to balance fiber some specialized diets and then supplements and a diet chart in the end so this is how we are going to start unrevealing the dietary management secrets so that we can help our body recover faster from uh, ulcerative colitis or rectal ulcers so let's start with the what are the food maps so food map stands for fermentable oligo di monosaccharides and polyols so what are these what are these these are short chain carbohydrates that are resistant to digestion the, the these are short chain carbohydrates which do not digest properly in our stomach instead of being absorbed into your blood stream they reach far end of your intestine where most of the gut bacteria reside what is going to happen when these are going to reach the far end of our intestine your gut bacteria then uses these carbs for fuel produce hydrogen gas cause digestive symptoms and Uh, sorry digestive symptoms in sensitive individuals okay so that means these are some type of insoluble carbohydrates okay which do not break down at the initial digestive process but are rather uh, used as the gut bacteria as fuel and they produce a lot of hydrogen gas so does all the bloating come from this gas yes definitely it does okay so food maps also draw liquid into your intestine which may cause diarrhea okay so this is when we feel bloated or heaviness in our abdomen after eating uh, some certain types of insoluble fibers that can cause some irritation to our gi tract although not everyone is sensitive of food maps this is very common among people with irritable bowel syndrome so uh, these food maps play a greater role with the problems of ulcerative colitis okay rather than rectal ulcer so a person suffering from rectal ulcer will have a much large number of options much higher number of options to choose from when it comes to food but a person suffering from severe ulcerative colitis or any other form of ibs will have to strictly strictly follow the food map guidelines so some other common food maps are for example fructose that is the simple sugar that is being found in fruits okay uh, half part of table sugar as well 
Number two is lactose, okay, found in dairy products. Then it is fructans that is found in grains, the carbohydrates and sugars that are found in grains. Galactans that are found in legumes, okay, and polyols, those are sugar alcohols or artificial sweeteners, uh, which are used in some uh, so and so zero cold drinks and diet cold drinks and sugar free cold drinks, okay. So they can, these all can disturb. Uh, the functioning and working of our gut bacteria okay so i hope till now i have been making very clear points okay but in now uh, from the next slides and from the next video we will be specifically discussing foods that are actually low in food maps which you have to adopt and high food map foods which we have to avoid uh, we will be continuing this topic in the next video